walking through the grave sites on the Mount of Olives, Har Hazesim, the resting place of our people since biblical times. But here I find no rest. In every row, on every terrace, along every ancient wall, the signs of hatred mar this holy ground. Here a pile of debris, there a makeshift playing field, Jewish gravestones as goalposts. I have come to honor my ancestors, my rabbis, my sages, the prophets, our scholars and leaders, the backbone of our people. But here I find dishonor and defilement. My stomach turns. Can this possibly be the place where King David wept? Where the Kahanim would go to prepare the ashes to purify the temple? Where the new month would be announced? Where the presence of God will come one day soon, splitting the mountain in two to herald the messianic age. And I think, what would I do? The answer is, in Jewish tradition, there's no greater mitzvah than dealing with the needs of those who are not able to deal with their own. The mitzvah of mace mitzvah, of kavod ha mace, of the dignity of the dead, doesn't end with a funeral. It only begins there. About five years ago, uh, when I read the horrific report in the Jerusalem Post from the state controller, and I said, how could this be? I decided that uh, I was going to get involved to bring awareness to all of Klal Yisrael and to bring awareness to the Israeli government. This can't go on. The Talmud teaches, as well as Chazal, that the body is considered a sacred vessel that held the neshama. There are many halachas that govern how a person conducts himself in a cemetery. So to think of individuals that will hire people to take sledgehammers and destroy the kvarim of our venerated Torah scholars for thousands of years is untenable. Visiting the graves in Harazetim, we came under rocks being thrown at us. And when you see the size of the rocks, you understand that rocks, like words, can kill. A year and a half ago, I was in Israel, and my nephews asked me to take them up to Harazaisim, to my father's grave. So I drove up. One nephew was sitting in the front seat of the car. He was in the passenger side. Another nephew in the back was sitting with his wife and two kids. Suddenly, I got attacked by 50 Arabs with stones. They broke every window in my car. And after that, they started to use sticks and to attack us. My nephew in the front got a stone in his face, so he got bloody in his face. They demolished the whole car. With this effort that has com uh, commenced in the last few months and the public awareness and attention, that there should be a clear upgrading of this site. I think it ought to be a major effort of the government as well as the municipality of Jerusalem. And I can say on behalf of many members of the Knesset, of all parties concerned, that we will support it vehemently in the Knesset. <laughs> We're here to work with the Israeli government that uh, this change must happen and everyone should be able to visit their loved ones, Rosh Hashivas and Rebbe's, whenever they wish. And if individuals will become more connected to Harazesim and to the Mekemes HaKadoshim and Eretz Yisrael by davening, by being mispalo, by doing acts of chesed, then HaKadosh Bohu will act in kind, mida connected mida, measure for measure. Because the more we venerate, appreciate and give dignity to Mekemes HaKadoshim, the stronger their security and the more they belong to us. We have come too far, fought too hard. We rebuilt some of the damage they did during the Jordanian occupation when tens of thousands of stones were destroyed and the bones of my people scattered in the dirt. But today, even beneath the Israeli flag, they still desecrate. They still hurl stones at peaceful mourners. Our work is clearly not over. So I will raise my voice and demand an end to this horror show. I will tell every Jew, every peace-loving soul on earth what is happening here and what needs to happen here from now on. I will ask each of you to join with me in restoring sanity to this place. And then I will rest. Jerusalem is calling, Jerusalem is calling.
call.